I'm Bruno Bastos. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, but I'm located in Midland, Texas. There is where I train at my school, Bastos BJJ Midland. Five Grappling Super League is very important for me. Not uh, most important would be the cash prize. For me, the, the most important thing would be about my legacy. I think the guys that I'm gonna face here, all those memories gonna be forever, and then the money somehow always gonna gonna end, you know. So for me, it's about my legacy, and uh, I hope you, you you guys enjoy because it's not every time, uh, it's not all the time that you have opportunity to see the show that you guys are gonna see here, men and women, uh, with the equal pay as well. I believe that Team Springs is an awesome competitor. He knows how to, to play with, with the rules. He always likes to, to, to push the pace on, on his match. He's very explosive. So I see that match being a fight between styles where uh, I have to be able to implement uh, my pace and not let him take on his pace. I'm pretty confident that I'm going to be able to, to do that. And then, team, I'm sorry, you'll not face Joan Cis. My name is Tim Spriggs. I'm from Columbia, Maryland, and I train under Team Lloyd Irvin Martial Arts Academy in Camp Springs, Maryland. A Tim Spriggs match is like a blockbuster movie. It's like Terminator 2. Hardcore action the whole way through. I don't stop. I go for the finish. I go for the win. No butt scooting, no leg scissoring. No footsie. Being selected for this eight-man tournament is important to me because it's an opportunity to go against the elite of our sport. It's very rare that you have an opportunity to go against the best of the best, and I'm relishing this opportunity. I'm very excited. I'm really happy that Five decided to put on this event. The first matchup is going to kick things off the right way. I respect Bruno Bastos and everything he's done in the past, but I came here to win. And like I said before, all my matches are like a summer blockbuster. It's going to be entertaining from beginning to end, and I'm going to go for the finish. All right, here we go. Tim Spriggs against Bruno Bastos. I really like this match. This is, you know, we have, not, I'm not going to say the older generation, but an, an older generation against one of the newest stars in Tim Spriggs uh, from Team Lloyd Irvin. This is, this is going to be exciting I, i'm a big fan of tim spriggs the guy is very entertaining and you heard in his promo video he comes out goes for takedowns he doesn't pull guard he's just he's just a very th it's like tim is a new generation fighter but a throwback to the old generation absolutely so, absolutely and bruno is he's an exceptionally decorated a athlete himself yes. he's no sleeper uh yeah he's he's very dangerous he's somebody who uh will be on the attack no doubt uh one of my favorite facts about uh, Bruno is how involved in charity he's been uh, throughout his career and the, in the, the programs that he's run to help get youngsters off the streets, uh, keep kids away from drugs. Um, so very honorable. Uh, these guys are getting at it at the, on the feet already. Uh, Tim is definitely somebody who he can wrestle. He's got uh, uh, his Marote Seonagi, drop Seonagi that he does is, is vicious, so he won't have that in a gi, but at the same time, he... Uh, He's formidable enough that Bruno decided to pull half guard. Oh, that's, you know, if you've seen Bruno Bastos compete before, you know he loves half guard. Sure. So this is kind of playing out as expected. I know, it, you know, Tim being from Lloyd Irvin, they probably have a system and game plan in place to deal specifically with Bruno's pull, probably study at the tape. But uh, let's see what happens here. Hard to replicate Bruno's yeah. half guard yes. in, a, in a training camp. Yeah, I think... You know, Bruno's half guard is, he, you know, one of the things he told me was is very unique to his, you know, to him. It's it's not something that he does that a lot of other, you know, top level competitors. He has his own style of half guard. You know, it's not mm -hmm. deep. It's not, it's very different. It's not shin shield or no, Z. No, he has his own philosophy on half guard. And I mean, is it, is it something that people can figure out? Let's see what happens. Four minutes and 35 seconds left in the match. Tim Spriggs on top, Bruno Bastos on the bottom. Tim trying to get the pressure pass here. Bruno, you know, controlling the half guard position. Not really pushing for much, but uh, 
maybe waiting for the opportunity uh, for Tim to alleviate pressure so he can perhaps go for an underhook and start his half guard game. And we're still in that two minute feel out period too. So uh, uh, wrist control seems to be something that uh, they both are focusing on. You can see how Tim is controlling the free arm wrist of Bruno so that he can't get a deep underhook so that he can't win. And uh, looks like he's controlling both wrists, trying to drag it past. Tim now continually trying to, I think, you know, like flatten Bruno out there and not let Bruno getting under the leg. Bruno just progressively, slowly, progressively trying to get that half guard game going. Tim doing a great job of defending. Trying to prevent that underhook, trying to prevent, you know, Bruno from initiating his game. Tons of top pressure. Mm -hmm. The pressure is something you can, you can definitely see. Uh, him really using that wrist control. Yeah, it's not very common, but that's a really, really smart thing to do. And I'm sure with, you know, if it's something that we haven't seen before, mentally, you know, what is Bruno thinking? Like, oh man, what, what kind of grip is this? You know, or is he just adapting to the scenario and trying to figure out ways just to deal with it? Looks like he was able to break that grip and continually trying to progress in the half guard here. And Tim trying to get that pass. Traditionally, you see guys go for an underhook from the half guard and uh, Bruno hasn't really been digging for it. There's oh. a knee slice. He's, Tim is out, attacking Turtle. Using that wrestling background to control the chin, control the legs. Almost out of bounds into the lap of a, of a spectator. He's actually into Ricard Ricardo Bastos, Bruno's brother there. So I couldn't see. Yeah. <laughs> out of bounds. <laughs> this is a comfortable place for him. Yeah. So two minutes and 47 seconds left. No advantages scored, but definitely an almost pass by Tim Spriggs. So, I mean, if this goes mm -hmm. to a decision, I, I think Tim yeah. might have that. Sure, sure. I think the forcing him to go to Turtle uh, and then attacking him, driving him completely off the mat, uh, and, and, and uh, Bastos is, is, is backing up a lot. Yeah. Um, if you watched Tim Spriggs' match before, you know he loves takedowns. I think he's just going to go for it. Sure. I'm waiting for that explosion to happen real soon. I, I know that he doesn't want to sit and, you, you know, assume that he's up, you know, in the, in the judges or referee's mind right now. So I think you're going to see something happen real soon. Absolutely. Or a half guard pull by Bruno. Yeah, <laughs> which, which is not, a, not necessarily a, uh, a bad strategy when you've got somebody coming after you like Tim Spriggs. Oh, definitely. You know, if, even if he were to do it, it could force, you know, if you were to do it, it's, it'd be interesting to see how Tim reacts to it. Is he going to go back to a pressure passing style half guard pass? Or is he going to try to slip out real quick, try to f create a scramble, try to take it, you know, maybe do a back take? Mm -hmm. Stop, stop, stop. Continually going out of bounds. Tim Spriggs and Bruno Bastos. Referee Alberto Marchetti restarts the action. Bruno now trying to come forward a little bit with the wrestling. More like just collar ties, sure. not really. <laughs> yeah. No shooting or anything yet, but let's see what Tim, let's see how Tim answers. He's threatening a double leg. He's threatening a blast double. Yep. Yeah, he called it. He's got to pull the trigger. You know what would be really interesting to see is if Tim pulled half guard. That would throw Bruno off. <laughs> that would throw oh, me off. There we go. Oh, almost out onto Stevens. St Stevens Road there. Well, one thing's for sure is, you know, Tim is definitely the aggressor in the match. Yeah. He's had his, oh, guard. there we go. Bruno Bastos pulling half guard. You know, I think at this point, Bruno just has to go for it. Yeah. He pulled half guard, yes, but he's got he's to push that. He's got to push uh, Tim's head away he's got to make some space he's got to dig for that right arm but tim's just locked down sure. tons of pressure on top and not having any of it and the pressure he's putting on here is not stalling pressure look at him walk those feet yes. forward he's he's looking to pass he really is looking to pass tim using trying to drop that head on the other side of bastos's to increase the leverage to get the pass bastos going in the deep Trying to hike up mm. Tim's leg. He's got his arm underneath. 13 seconds left. It's gonna, it's gonna take a big movement. He's gotta get a sweep. It, you know, it's that right arm, that right underhook that Tim has that's really blocking 
Bostos from Tim's pressure is way too much for him. Match is over. Another referee's decision. Let's see how this one turns out. I agree with you. I think uh, Spriggs pressure, his uh, forward. Aggressiveness for sure, man. yes. Yeah. And it looks like we have a winner. Mr. Tim Spriggs from Team Lloyd Irvin advances and will be facing Lucas Hosha in the second round of the eight-man bracket. That'll be a great match. Stay tuned. All right, our next match.